Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to share five stock photography mistakes that a lot of people make in the beginning when they're just starting out, including myself. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Nicole and I'm a photographer based in the Washington DC area. I've been selling photos and videos on stock media platforms for a few years now. And these are just some of the things that I consider to be, you know, bad practices or rather things that could hold you back from selling your content. But again, this is based on my own observations and experiences. So, you know, you can always take it or leave it. With good strategies and practices, selling stock photos and videos can be a great way to bring in a steady income stream every month, even in 2022. However, a lot of people do these five things when they're first starting out, you know, which prevents them from getting a lot of sales. So let's get right into it. Number one, uploading saturated content. It seems like almost everyone who starts uploading stock content uploads photos of flowers when they are first starting out. Lots and lots of flowers. I mean, flowers are pretty and all, but think about it. How unique is your flower photo or video compared to the millions of other flower photos and videos that are for sale out there? How would your flower photo or video get discovered? And even if it did get discovered, how much demand is there for, you know, those kinds of flower photos and videos? Of course, there's a certain amount of demand for everything, but is it enough? Most likely no. Same thing applies to other generic photos and videos like blades of grass, roses, clouds in the sky, ocean waves, etc., etc. You get the picture. When people first sign up to sell their media on stock platforms, they frequently start by uploading these kinds of pictures and they quickly get disappointed that they're not making much or any money off of them. But you know what? I did the same thing when I was first starting out. In fact, this was one of the very first photos that I uploaded on a stock platform back in 2017. A water lily. Of course, this photo never sold and I expect that it never will. There are just a lot of water lilies out there. So instead of uploading generic photos or videos of subjects where you have tons of competition already, try to upload content that's more unique. Try to create concept photos around trending topics, use models to illustrate those trending topics, document newsworthy events where you live, capture destinations from a unique perspective, or create photos and videos of trending products, locations, or objects. Think about potential buyers. What do you think that news media, bloggers, or filmmakers need for their projects? What kinds of photos and videos do other people need that you know, they either can't take themselves or they don't have time to take themselves. Number two, portfolio size. How large is your stock portfolio? If you wanna sell a lot of photos and videos on stock media platforms, you'll wanna make sure that you have a good balance of quality and quantity. Stock is a numbers game. In order to bring in a decent monthly income with it, you'll definitely wanna have a very large portfolio. And by quality, I also mean unique content. If you are exclusively selling photos, you will want to have many thousands of unique images for sale, especially since you might make anywhere from a few cents to a few dollars for a photo sale, depending on which platform you're using. If you only have a few dozen photos for sale, don't be surprised if you're not making any sort of income. Focus on building up your portfolio. It takes a long time to create a large portfolio, which is why stock photography and videography is not a way to make, you know, easy overnight money or anything. It takes time and consistency. Videos will usually earn you more money per download, but you'll still want to make sure that you have a sizable video portfolio. When it comes to my own portfolio, video clip sales are less frequent, but definitely higher earning. And 80% of my stock media income comes from video sales, even though only 20% of my stock media content consists of video clips. Speaking of stock media, the sponsor of today's video is actually a stock media platform. So here's just a quick message about them. This video is sponsored by Pond5, a stock media platform that's home to millions of stock video clips, music tracks, sound effects, after effects templates, 3D models, and images. In fact, it is the largest video first content marketplace in the world with 30 million stock video clips to choose from many of which can't be found anywhere else. The website is super easy to use with advanced filters that allow you to find exactly what you need. 
Pond 5's mission is to create world-class storytellers. So to help you tell your story, I'm excited to offer you a 20% discount on your first purchase from Pond5 with a link in my description below. They have also launched their new Refer and Earn program, which I am part of. Anyone can join and start referring. Buyers you refer will receive 20% off their first order and you'll earn 20% of that first purchase. Plus, you'll get 5% of any purchase that user makes in a whole year. The incentives just get better if you're a contributing artist, so definitely check out the Sell Your Media page to see what being a Pond5 contributor is all about. Okay, back to my tips. Mistake number three is not uploading consistently. As a stock media creator, you'll wanna make sure that you upload new content consistently. Some people consider stock photography and videography to be passive income, and that is both true and false. Yes, your stock media can continue to earn you money years and years after you did the work, but your returns will likely decrease if you don't continue uploading, which is why it's not truly passive. Trends are constantly changing, which means you should continue to upload content that's in demand at any given time. Most stock platforms also allow buyers to search for content by newest. So having new items for sale also means that your content is gonna show up in search results in that way. I had some major life changes in 2021 that prevented me from going out as much and creating photos and videos. And I definitely saw the results of that in my end of year tax forms. I made about 17% less in 2021 than I did in 2020. Of course, there could also be a number of other reasons for that, but uploading less frequently is definitely one of the reasons. Number four, over editing and under editing. Stock media platforms usually have, you know, some sort of criteria page where they talk about what they're looking for when you upload photos and videos to their platforms. And one thing they'll often mention is that they don't want the media to be you know, overly edited because a lot of times stock media buyers, you know, clients, they're looking for content, you know, photos or videos that they can edit themselves. You know, maybe they have a certain style for a project and they wanna edit that video clip or, you know, that photo to their style. So you wanna be careful not to go too crazy with edits. And that's especially true with editorial content, you know, news footage and things like that. You definitely don't wanna go crazy editing any of that. You just want those kinds of uh, photos and videos to depict the reality of, you know, what's going on. On the other hand, doing absolutely nothing to your content can make it look, you know, a little bit bland. Um, so usually for photos, I will do like a slight color correction, you know, make the colors pop just a little bit. And for videos, you know, if I'm shooting a clip that I plan to slow down afterwards, you know, I'll turn it into a slow-mo, or if it's a little shaky, I'll stabilize it, but I won't do a whole lot. With stock content, you gotta find a good balance between over-editing and under-editing. You don't want your photos to look underexposed or overexposed. You know, you might wanna enhance those colors just a tiny little bit, but at the same time, you don't wanna overly edit them. And again, with video, you know, you might wanna create a slow motion clip if that's what you were intending to do. You might wanna remove the audio or just stabilize the clip, but I wouldn't do anything, you know, too intense to that video clip. Because again, you wanna give potential buyers the creative freedom to do what they wanna do to your photos and or videos. And mistake number five is not using good keywords. The only way your photos and videos can be discovered on stock platforms is if you have good quality keywords. That's how people will find them. So you wanna make sure that you use a lot of keywords, that you use good quality keywords, keywords that people are searching for, and that you do some research so that you, know, you can keyword your photos and videos properly. If for example, you're shooting a certain location, you know, put in all the details about that location in the keywords, you know? If you're not sure what keywords to use, uh, there's a couple things you could do. You could either one, look for similar images and see what keywords are being used for those images or videos. Or you could simply Google the subject matter, you know, whether it's a product photo or a location or, you know, a subject, whatever it is that you're shooting, do a little Googling about that, you know, person, object, or place, find out a little bit more about it, and then insert those keywords. If you're only using like, I don't know, three to four keywords on your photo or video, like I guarantee you it's probably not gonna be discovered. 
So you want to make sure that you're using as many good quality keywords as you can. Anyways, all of these bad practices that I mentioned, uh, I did all of these when I was first starting out, as many people do. But after selling my photos and videos on stock platforms for many years now, I have a pretty good idea of how to optimize my content so that it not only gets discovered, but that it gets downloaded. Anyways, don't forget to check out that Pond5 link in my description below. And as always, give this video a like if you liked it, subscribe if you are new here, and I'll see you in the next video.